Okay, so when you are disassembling the system and you only need to take out the motherboard, the only plastic cover you have to take off is this one. Uh, you don't have to take the other plastic cover off. This is the only one that's necessary. And if you go from the side, all right, you're just gonna push up and then it just pops right off. Okay, so now you have this. Alright, so this is your fan and this is the disk drive, but the first thing you want to do is take off this little warranty sticker. You have to take this off because there's a screw under there and then you want to take off this uh, cover that has the uh, this has the plugs for the fan, and then it also has the wires that plug into the motherboard. So let's take this off. All right, I have my screwdriver. So for this one, I like to use a flathead. All right, let's take this warranty sticker off. All right, there we go, warranty sticker off. Okay, and then you'll see that screw right there. That's a T9 screw. Okay, and then you're gonna wanna take this cover off. This one is not disposable. Keep this one because you will need to put it back on when you are reassembling the system. So keep this, we'll just put that off to the side. All right, and there you can see the plugs for the fan. And then this one, I believe it hooks up to the motherboard. So let's go. You are also going to need to remove this plastic cover. This goes off right there on the side, and then I also use the flathead to remove this plastic cover as well. So let's go in there, let's go. This one, there we go, pops right off. Okay, and then put that back. All right, this, you will need your T9 screwdriver so let's remove the plastic vent for the fan okay go this now when i am removing this i like to keep the screws in the place of which I removed them so you'll you'll see because the screws are different sizes and I've been doing this for about a year but if this is your first or even second fifth time doing this uh, it is a little hard to remember like exactly where the screws go so just keep the screws in there just because it's easier to reassemble because then you know where they go. All right, now we can pop out the fan. Just have to unplug this. All right, here we go. Here's the PS5 fan. Okay, now we have this. All right, now I will be removing. Now for this one, you will need a Phillips screwdriver and you're just gonna remove this. Let's do it, let's go back. We got our Phillips. Okay, we take this screw out. Okay. There we go. And then, like I said, just keep the screw in there. Okay, now we have this. Okay. You also want to make sure that you disassemble your system where there's no water or and no liquid can get on the system because if any liquid does get on the system, it's very, very fragile and it can damage the system further. So let's go back into the T9. We've got the T9. Alright, now we are going to go around the system and we're going to take off the screws all around the plastic cover that keep the plastic cover on because that is the next thing that we will need to remove. So go along. Like I said, once you unscrew the screws, just make sure you leave them in the plastic cover because like I said you guys, these screws 
are all different sizes and if you're this is your first time disassembling a system you probably won't remember like exactly where they go and all the screws are different sizes so if you put the wrong screw in a place where it's not supposed to go it can damage the motherboard and we've had people bring in systems where they've tried fixing it themselves they've they've tried disassembling the systems themselves which is fine but uh, it's all either like a ribbon cable gets damaged or they put the screw in the wrong place and it damages the motherboard and it damages components and you really don't want that to happen because these systems are expensive you don't want to damage something unnecessarily so let's go let's do this Another thing I forgot to mention, and I'm going to do that right now, is you will have to remove this silver screw that's on the plastic and on. it's also connecting the disk drive, so you will need to remove this. It's a Q9, but for this screw, it looks like the ones that are uh, on the motherboard, so you don't really need to keep this one because it's... It's not really important to keep it in the place. So let's remove the cables. There we go. You will need to remove the cables in order to take off the plastic. So let's go. And then this should just pop right off. Okay. There we go. Now we have our plastic cover. And it has the screws in it. So once you're done with the repair and you want to reassemble the system, then all you have to do is just pop this right in and it's good to go. So we've got, that. we've got that to the side. Okay, now we have this. Okay, now you want to be very, very careful once you get to this point, okay? So if you can see right here, there is a ribbon cable. This ribbon cable is for the disk drive and it connects it to the motherboard. You have to be very ca careful when you are disconnecting this. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to go, okay, you're going to press down, I'm not sure if you can see in the video, you're going to push this silver tab, you're going to push it to the left, because that's how it's going to disconnect the, cap the ribbon cable, there we go, okay? Now we removed the cable, so now we can take this off. Alright, and then now we have successfully removed the disk drive with no damage. See, you do not want to damage this cable. If this cable gets damaged, you will have not only disk drive issues, but it could also affect if your system needs an update. Uh, if this ribbon cable is damaged, then your system is not going to update successfully. So be very, very careful. Okay. Now, we are going to unplug these wires. Unplug them gently. And then we're going to remove this ribbon cable. For this one, you don't exactly have to do anything. You just simply gently remove it. There we go. We're going to remove... I'm not sure if you can see... I'm gonna remove these cables. These these are for that connect the power. They're connected to the power supply. All right, and then we have this ribbon cable right here, and we're gonna remove that. Like I said, just gently pull it out. Okay, that's all you need to do. All right, now all we have to do is take off this metal. Um, this metal heatsink plate and then by doing that we have to take all of these silver screws out now these there are a lot so in order to get to, down to this motherboard it, you will have to take out a lot of screws so just make sure when you take them out you put them in a safe place so you don't lose any because you will need to put them all back when you do reassemble the system so let's go around like I said 
got to remove all these silver screws right here. And there are a lot, so I'm just going to do that. And then while I'm doing that, I'm just going to share a story. So, like I said, I've been doing this for about a year. And I've seen a lot of different systems. And <laughs> you want to make sure... In order to preserve the lifespan of your system, you want to make sure that you keep your system away from any smoke. You want to keep it away from any any and all dust. If you have pets, like I do myself, make sure you uh, don't get them near the system. Or if they shed, make sure they don't shed near the system. And you want to make sure that you keep your system in a place where it can't, it's not susceptible to damage. And you also want to make sure that you keep your system as cool as possible. So like I said, keep it away from dust, smoke, and uh, any shedding hair. You want to make sure you don't put anything hot around it keep it away from any liquids because I have seen um, sometimes people get water damage and then it's the system sits for a long time and then it still powers on and it functions for a while but what ends up happening is is there's a lot of corrosion on the motherboard and that if it's not treated that can lead to uh, damage on the system as well and you also want to make sure that if your house or apartment has any cockroaches that you keep your system safe because cockroaches and pests will go inside the system and they will infest it because they will eat the dust and they'll eat the motherboard they will Cockroaches can survive off of anything, so don't think that your system is safe <laughs> from cockroaches, which is not something you would ever think that you would have to keep your system safe from. But like I said, I've been doing this for only a year, which isn't a long... It's enough to know and it's enough to have experience, but... I, the people who've been working on these consoles for like five plus years, I'm sure they've they have dealt with cockroaches, uh, crazy things. You you name it. It's actually very common for little kids to put cards uh, or anything like that into the disk drive, so then the disk drives can get damaged. So you want to be very careful with these things because they are not meant, unless you preserve the life span, they're not really meant to last forever. So you want to make sure you keep them in good condition. Alright, so we are almost done. Like I said, there's a lot of screws. There's a lot of screws on the side. So if you want to keep them good want to keep them safe. I have my little pile right here where I put all my screws. And I'm gonna go like this. We are almost there. We're almost done. So this system does power on uh, good. It powers on fine. It's just not outputting a signal to the TV. Um, but sometimes people uh, when they are getting a black screen like let's just say the system was dropped or something right now the hdmi port is not damaged but when they turn their system on the system does beep and it turns on uh, but it'll flash blue or it'll give a black screen and when it does that make sure this is the screw this black screw is on the side it's right there on the side just make sure you keep a hold of this when you are reassembling because this is the one black screw um, out of all of the silver ones that you will need to put back when you reassemble so they will think it's a no signal issue 
but the port isn't damaged and it's not giving you no signal screen it's just a black screen or like I said the light is flashing blue so the system has blue light of death now when it does that people think that it's a uh, bad signal they think it's an H they think it's an HDMI port uh, issue but really it's it's not so what they do is they keep fidgeting with the port and they keep plugging in and plugging out and plugging in and then not only does their HDMI port get damaged because they're fidgeting with it, they're moving it around, they loosen the port on the system, things like that because they're getting upset because the system's not working like how it used to. And that can, like I said, that can cause an HDMI port uh, issue. Uh, and then that's not even talking about you know what the system is doing where it's giving black screen and it's flashing the blue so uh, you can actually create more problems if you're not careful so now that we have all the screws off we're gonna remove this metal heat sink uh, now you will have to be kind of careful because you do need to push pull on it a little bit but just you know do it in a way that's not with a lot of force there, there we go we have it moved and i like to because there are ribbon cables that are uh taped on well, i like to just set this off to the side like this just set it off to the side that way when you are reassembling all you have to do is just fold it over so now we have and i'm going to try to show this now we have this. Now we're down to the motherboard, but we have, I'm going to try to see if I can do this. We have this ribbon cable that you need to remove, and this ribbon cable is for the, I believe it's for the power button. No, it's not for the power button. I believe it's for the USB port. Now, this, no, I think it's for the power button or it's for the light, or it's for the USB port. It's for one of those, but let's go. So you're gonna wanna push this metal tab down, push it down, and then you wanna remove the ribbon cable. And like I said, there we go, it comes out. You have to push that metal tab down though, otherwise if you try to pull the ribbon cable out, you will damage it. And you do not want to damage that because it's very, very difficult <laughs> to repair and fix. So now we're going to get our Phillips screwdriver and we're going to take off this. I'm going to take this off. Okay, we are almost there. And I'll try to make a video of me reassembling the system. But for right now, I'm just gonna do this. Alright, so there we go. We removed this. Like I said, just keep those screws locked in there. There we go. Okay, and then we gotta remove this. Remove that. Okay, and then we are down to the nitty gritty. Now we can just pop this motherboard out. There we go. Here's the system. Now, this has liquid metal on it. So, also, the bottom part, this has liquid metal as well. So, make sure you do not get any liquid metal on the motherboard. It will damage the motherboard severely. So, keep clear of that make sure you don't get any liquid metal on the motherboard keep it within that little rectangle keep it within the rectangle okay now we have it here's where the battery is before you do any repairing on the system you have to make sure that the battery is removed so we're going to remove the battery So here is the battery, got that removed, now let's look at the port, see if the 
support. Yeah, this is what we're gonna repair. We're gonna repair this. Okay, all right. Now, I'm gonna start the repair and then hopefully I get to make a video of me reassembling it. Thank you guys for watching, enjoy.